Hi guys, welcome to the Art of Server. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to flash this Fujitsu uh, LSI based um, RAID controller into IT mode. So in front of you here is a Fujitsu D3307. It is uh, a LSI controller based on the SAS 3008 chipset. And normally these uh, come with Fujitsu servers and they're usually in um, um, RAID mode running Regomade firmware. And today I'm gonna to convert this into IT mode. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and put this in the server here. All right, I'm gonna power this guy on and we're gonna uh, get connected on the um, virtual console and then I'll show you the steps from there. All right. All right guys, so I booted up the machine with FreeDOS and this is my FreeDOS drive uh, on a USB stick that has all my firmware tools and I'll show you what tools you're gonna to need. Um, but basically, I'm going to do this in FreeDOS. You can do it uh, under the uh, UEFI shell if you want to do that as well. Um, but anyway, I have my tools under a directory called LSI 3008 for the 3008 chipset. And I think it's, yeah, D3307. So let me just show you the files that I have here. And this, these are the files you're going to need. So um, you're going to need the mega CLI tool and we're going to use that initially to extract the SAS address and serial number and that kind of stuff off the card. And, and since it's originally in mega raid mode uh, or running the mega raid firmware, you're going to need the mega CLI tool to do this. So, um, so that's the first thing you need. And then, uh, second is the mega rec tool. Now this one, you're going to need a very specific version. You're going to need one that's new enough, uh, that understands the 3008 cards. So um, in, in particular, the version for this mega rec is uh, 01.02-020 dated August 4th, 2015. So that's the version you're going to want. And I'll, uh, I'll leave those details in the description of this video for you. Okay, um, <clears throat> other than that, you need the SAS3 flash um, utility, and this is the DOS version. Um, in the final step, we're gonna use that to flash the firmware and SAS address um, and serial number and that type of stuff um, back into this card. Okay, and uh, so those are the utilities you're going to need. Now, as far as the uh, data files, okay, you're gonna need the SAS uh, 9300 8i IT mode uh, firmware. And so over here, because this is DOS and there's that uh, uh, file name limitation. It's basically limited to uh, eight characters and a three character extension. You're going to see it as SAS 930-1.bin. Uh, okay, so that's the file. And you can download all these files, by the way, um, from Broadcom.com's website. Just search for the SAS 3008 controllers and you can find these firmware files. You're going to uh, need the BIOS and UEFI ROM files if you want to flash those. Um, I typically recommend that people do flash those because they're very good for diagnostics in a pre-boot environment. Um, so that would be the mpt sas 3rom file and also the mpt3x64.rom file. So um, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna flash those two files as well. And um, <clears throat> One last thing is that we're going to have to change the SBR on this card because it has the SBR originally for the Mega Raid firmware, and that's not going to work with the IT mode firmware. Now, um, I've extracted the SBR from a normal LSI uh, SAS 3008 card that's already in IT mode, and that's what you see up here is as the file 3008IT.SBR. Okay, and this is a 448 byte uh, file. Okay, um, just as a note, you know, in past, uh, I guess, instructions on how to cross flash uh, some LSI cards to IT mode, there's often a step that talks about erasing the SBR with a file called empty uh, SBR.bin or something like that. Um, and that just writes a bunch of zeros. Um, with the SAS 2008 and the older SAS 2 uh, controllers, the SBR was 256 bytes, so the empty SBR file usually was 256 bytes of zeros. Um, do not do that. Do not use that in this case. Um, what will happen is if the SBR gets wiped out, uh, the card will not be recognized and then basically you've bricked it. Okay. There is a way to recover, but you basically have to use a chip, uh, reader, uh, and externally write the contents back into the, uh, EEPROM chip. So it is recoverable. Um, but you know, if you don't have the equipment to, uh, 
basically clamp onto the EEPROM chip externally, um, then you know you won't be able to repair it. So uh, do not erase the SBR. Okay. Um, when you change the SBR here, you have to put in the proper content first. If you erase it with zeros, uh, it, the car's not going to be recognized upon reboot and it's going to like disappear basically. Okay. So I just want to word of caution there. I just want to put that out there. Um, all right. So you got the SBR. We, we've got the, uh, the, the UEFI and um, BIOS ROM. We've got the firmware and that's all we need as far as the data files. Okay. And um, the tools we're going to use. So the first tool we're going to use is Mega CLI. Okay, so the command here is mega CLI. Um, we're going to do ADP all info dash A0. Now, A0 is kind of the uh, index reference to the number of controllers. If you only have one controller, it's going to be zero. Okay, if you have two controllers, you might need to figure out which number it is and you know use the appropriate number. I recommend if you're doing this type of stuff, keep it really simple, take out any other cards that are in the system and just um, you know, have that one card that you're working on in the system, especially if you're new to this, uh, it's easy to, you know, pick the wrong one. If you're using a motherboard that has an onboard controller, then it gets a little complicated. Obviously you can't, you cannot remove the onboard controller, but sometimes in the BIOS, you can disable that controller. And so you might want to uh, try to do that and just disable the onboard controller so it's not seen at all and then uh, install the card that you're working and that way it's um, going to be the only card on the system. Okay, so in this case, it is the only card on the system, so I'm doing A0. And if you run this command, um, you know, I'll just go ahead and run it for now. You'll see that it basically pulls out all the information from the card that it can gather. And we're going to keep this information because um, I'm going to preserve the original SAS address. And I also want to preserve the serial number on this card because there's a serial number on the sticker of the card and just, you know, I kind of uh, OCD a little bit, so I kind of like to keep those things type of, uh, type of things consistent. Okay, so I'm just going to redirect the output that you just saw into a file. And um, I've been on, been doing this and I've been saving it to these numbered files. So I'm going to call this card004.txt. Uh, and this is just, you, you can name it whatever you want. Um, just save the data that's um, that that you get out of the this command, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do that and redirect the output of that command to that file. Okay, so that looks like it's done. Now let's go ahead and just take a look at it and make sure that the content is actually there. Okay, so you'll see that I have product name, serial number, so that's good. That's you know one of the, some of the things I need. Um, if you scroll down further, you're going to see SAS address. Okay, right here. So that's the SAS address. And so the, the essential information that I want uh, are definitely in this file. So we're good to go. I'm going to hit Q to get out of there. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, overwrite the SBR, okay? So we're gonna write, uh, do MegaRec. Oh, you know what, actually before that, let's make sure that the MegaRec tool can see the card. So we're gonna run MegaRec um, dash ADP list. And if you uh, ent hit enter there, it'll say a oh, list uh, of identified cards. There is a type 3008, so that's definitely there. I'll hit continue. There are no other cards here. So, okay, definitely MegaRec can see the card. And so the first thing we're gonna do is write the SBR to card zero. As you can see up here, it says MR card zero. So we need to uh, reference that index number. So we're gonna uh, do mega rec write SBR zero. So it's gonna write the SBR to uh, that, the, the zeroth car, card. And we're gonna uh, write the 448 byte uh, SBR for the 3008 uh, IT mode uh, LSI card. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And you're going to see these little warning messages about real mode interrupt vector has been modified. So don't worry about though, that is expected. Um, at this point, it has successfully written the contents of the 448 bytes uh, of that SBR to the EEPROM of the card, okay? And the next step is we're gonna clear the flash. All right, so we're gonna, again, we're gonna reference the index number of the card, which is zero and we're gonna run clean flash zero, and this is going to erase the flash content. So basically it's gonna erase the firmware. So uh, at the end of this first uh, kind of few steps here is uh, we're going to have a card that has the correct SBR for IT mode, and it's not gonna have any firmware at all. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and run this. And this is gonna take a few seconds, so I'm gonna just uh, wait for this complete and come back. All right, looks like the uh, erasing of the flash is complete. And so at this point, we want to reboot the system. 
So, and the purpose of the reboot is basically have the card recognized as an IT mode card with the uh, IT mode SPR that we've put on it. Uh, at this point, you're not going to be able to um, do anything else with it or as, as far as like flashing IT mode firmware on it. So you, we definitely have to reboot. I'm going to uh, reboot this machine right now. And uh, once it boots back up, I'll come back. All right, so we're booted back up uh, into FreeDOS again. And I'm going to again go into the directory where I have my tools for flashing the D3307. And the next step is, so at this point, the card is not running with any firmware, but it has the correct SBR for IT mode. And so we're going to be able to access it using the SAS uh, 3 flash utility. So uh, I'm going to... Uh, if you do a listing here, by the way, it's going to automatically ask you for a firmware file and stuff like that. So I'm not going to do that because I actually want to do a couple of things on the same command. Um, but I know it's the only controller, so I'm going to do sat, uh, dash C0 for the, the zeroth controller. We're going to invoke dash O for the advanced mode. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily needed here, but we're going to do it anyway because it just enables all the other options, basically. Uh, we're going to do dash F for the firmware. And uh, again, the firmware file is SAS93... Uh, 100-it.something, um, sorry, it's sas9300 underscore 8i underscore it dot bin, but you're not going to see it in FreeDOS as that because the, the file names have a character limitation, okay? So it's going to look uh, uh, like sas930 uh, tilde 1 dot bin. All right, and then I'm also going to flash the BIOS ROM. So that's um, this file and then the UEFI too. Okay, so this is going to flash the firmware, the BIOS, and UEFI ROMs uh, to that card. So I'm going to hit enter right now. All right, so at this point, we've got the firmware flashed. And if I run SAS3 flash at this point, I can do a listing. And you'll see that we have the correct um, firmware and all that stuff. And it'll be in IT mode. Now, uh, when you do this process, uh, the... SAS address is going to get completely erased. So as you can see right there, it's all zeros. So that's uh, why we ran that mega CLI command in the beginning to extract the SAS address. Uh, I also like to put the uh, serial number back into the, the flash. And just to be consistent, it's just me. It's not necessary. All right, so as you can see, uh, we have the IT mode, uh, firmware, BIOS, UEFI all set and ready to go. Uh, at this point, the card actually is functional, except that it has uh, wiped out uh, SAS address. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that in a second here. Um, I'm going to uh, pull that information, as well as the serial number, out of the file where we saved that information. Okay, now my free DOS is a full installation of free DOS, by the way, and so I have commands like grep and awk and stuff like that in here. So if you're using uh, kind of a minimal uh, free DOS, uh, you know, setup, you, you might not have all these commands. So uh, if, you, if you're wondering where your grep command is, that's um, probably why. Okay, um, all right, so those are the, 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 um, the serial number and SAS address we're going to use. So um, you can basically flash this back with the SAS3 flash command. So again, we're gonna uh, do this to controller zero. So that's the dash C zero. Um, invoke the dash O for the advanced options. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is the serial number. So um, that's dash tracer. And uh, so the number is um, removing the leading um, zeros. It's 482 um, and then we're going to also uh, put the SAS address back in. So that's dash SAS add. And that is 500-300-5702-33-0A70. OK, and then if I hit enter, we're basically going to uh, flash those uh, values back into the firmware. All right, so uh, and Importantly, you'll see that after the SAS address is programmed, you'll see it says resetting adapter. So that's going to ensure that the adapter is running with that SAS address. So now if we just kind of go back into our list command, and we're going to see that it has the SAS address and the serial number back in the card. All 
All right, guys, so there you have it. This is now a proper uh, SAS 3008 IT mode card with the latest firmware as of this recording, at least. And uh, we've got the proper SAS address back in the card and the board uh, tracer number, which is basically the serial number. Okay, so anyway, that's it. That's how you convert this uh, Fujitsu D3307 Mega Raid card to IT mode. Uh, I hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and make sure to subscribe to see more videos like this from me. All right, thanks very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.